This is Ascension Sunday, the Sunday before Pentecost. And one has to admit that we as a church have failed uh, to get across clearly to people the value of the third person of the Trinity, the role of the third person of the Trinity, the gifts, the fruits, the whole thing. One of the major reasons we have failed, and I am 100% convinced of this, is that we wait too long. We wait way too long to introduce to our children the Holy Spirit for some weird reason, I don't know why historically this has happened, we wait till grade 8, confirmation year, to introduce them to God the Holy Spirit. By that time, they've already been corrupted. By that time, they're already using the word that is the opposite of the Holy Spirit. They use the B word, boring, so boring. Religion, boring. Jesus, boring. Church, boring. All oh, so boring. Which is the opposite of God the Holy Spirit. Yesterday, we celebrated our first round of confirmations. There'll be three rounds um, because this year the numbers are so big. Uh, so the bishop is coming three times um, for our three elementary schools because this year we're confirming grades sevens and eights. Because as I've informed you, confirmation has been moved from grade 8 to grade 7. So next year it'll be grade 7s. This year, because it's a double cohort year, we've done 7s and 8s. We asked the cardinal and bishops for 20 years to get this thing out of grade 8. Because it was ridiculous, totally ridiculous, that confirmation was in grade 8. Because by 10 years of Catholic elementary schools, the kids have only one thing in their brain. Get me out of here. Get me out of this school. I'm so sick of this building. I've been in here for 10 years. Get me out of here. And then that got translated into get me out of this Catholic religion. Get me out of this church. Get me out of here. I don't want to be part of this anymore. Get me out of here. Which is logical because they just translate their feelings from their elementary school to their faith and to their church so that the majority of them by high school dumped us right after their confirmation year. Now, I never went to Catholic school, so I never experienced this dumping experience. But any of you that went to Catholic school knew that the majority of your friends by grade nine were never coming to church again. Yesterday, I had one of my altar servers beside me who's in high school, and I said to her, what grade are you in? She said, grade 10. And I said, what percentage of your class in grade 10 is practicing their faith? And she said, well, that's interesting, Father, because the week after Easter, my religion teacher, she goes to Catholic school, asked my class, which is about 27 kids, how many kids went to Mass last weekend on Easter Sunday? Four put up their hand. She was one of the four. So four out of 27 kids went to Mass on Easter. We're not talking any Sunday. On Easter, four out of 27 kids went to Mass in her class. Okay, so obviously we failed. Like we failed, and we have to admit, you see, a lot of bishops get upset with me because I have no problem in using the word failure because I have found that after my 55 years of life, that if you don't use the word failure, you never look for a solution. And that's why it's not happening, because we're afraid to use the word failure, whereas I have no problem in using the word failure. Okay? Because then you start looking for solutions. And one of the solutions was to get confirmation out of grade 8, which was obviously a waste of time. So they moved it to grade 7 with the hope that with two years of preparation, seven, and then confirmation, and then in grade eight, we still have them in elementary school, that somehow our you know, numbers will be improving in high school, and that they won't find this so boring. So I said to the bishop yesterday, he's coming to do our confirmations this year, he comes every three years, I said to the bishop, you know, almost half, because this year we're confirming 150 kids, 73 
of those are going to Steubenville. That's a higher percentage than any other parish in the archdiocese. Many parishes in the archdiocese have 73 kids and all are going to Steubenville. We have 250 going to Steubenville from this parish. We are, have the largest number, and I know it seems weird that this rinky-dink little parish in a subdivision in Thornhill has the largest number, but we do. Why? Well, because we're not so boring. We work hard at not being boring. We work hard at being spirit-filled. And that's why we got to start early with our kids, introducing them to the passion of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and getting them to know them. So today, the kids will know three gifts of the Holy Spirit. By Pentecost, they will know all seven. How am I going to accomplish this? You are going to teach them the other four. Before next weekend, that is your homework. And God help you. <laughs> if you do not do your homework. Because if you think, I'll let you get away with it. Yeah. So now, you're obviously shaking your booties. Because you're thinking, I, I, I don't know the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now you will learn them. And this is the whole point. And Pentecostals are incredibly good at this. They start them when they're just like born talking about God the Holy Spirit. So these are Pentecostal children learning about the gifts of the Spirit. You will not just learn the gifts. You will learn the hand signals that will help the children understand. Mm. Mm. So... Pay attention, because you're going to be imitating them. So pay attention. This is the gifts of the Spirit. Ready? Wisdom, Wisdom understanding, understanding, knowledge, knowledge fortitude, fortitude, counsel, counsel, counsel piety, piety, fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Now, now, now you's going to be repeating that. Because you're going to be teaching your children this, this week. Together. This is the gifts of the Spirit. Ready? Wisdom, Wisdom understanding, understanding, knowledge, fortitude, counsel, piety, piety, fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Okay. Uh, no, see... I can keep you here until I want to. So given that about 10% of you followed my instruction, the rest of you were there, I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh no, see, if you had another priest, maybe. But you should know, you're not leaving this church till 100% of you, including you in the small chapel, don't think I'm not looking, <laughs> until 100% of you memorize it, go through the motions, learn it. You want to stay till three? I live here. <laughs> so I, I, I ain't going nowhere. And if you think I'm kidding, you're new to this parish. So, we're going to try again, and I'm watching. So if one of you, and I'll point you out to the rest of the congregation, I have no problem in using intimidative measures at all. So if one of you does not do this, I will point you out to the congregation, because you're the reason they're staying here until 3 o'clock. This is my way of teaching. This is how I grew up. Together. This is the gifts of the Spirit. Ready? Wisdom, Wisdom understanding, understanding, knowledge, fortitude, knowledge, counsel, 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 piety, piety fear, of the Lord. fear of the Lord. I think... I don't know what you're clapping for because 5% of you still did not do it. <laughs> These are the ones that cause us problems. There is no way. I will go Matthew 23 on your behind. If you don't know what that means, read Matthew 23. 
I will go map how I taught my godchildren when they showed me attitude, how I taught my godchildren the Bible, is I said to my godchildren, you be showing your Uncle Mario attitude. I go Matthew 23 on your butt. Yes, I will. That's how my children, my godchildren learn Matthew 23. If you're ever interested, give it a read. So some of you need me to go Matthew 23 on your butt. And I have no problem doing it. And I will point you out to the rest of the congregation the next round. I promise you. Because I'll be watching. And I will point you out. I have no problem in embarrassing you. I have no problem at all. At all. And I especially saw two teenagers that are going, no way. So we're going to try it again <laughs> and again. I, I live here. I'm happy being here. Again. If one of you shows me attitude, everybody stays. That's called a family. This is how I learned. This is how they used to teach children before we started messing up our parenting. <laughs> Together, as one family in Christ, This is the gifts of the Spirit. Ready? Wisdom, Wisdom understanding, understanding, knowledge, knowledge fortitude, fortitude, counsel, 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 piety, piety fear, of the Lord. fear of the Lord. Excellent. Well done. Give yourselves a nice hand. And for those of you I did not see, Jesus knows. Jesus knows. The gift of understanding. Jesus said, I will send the Holy Spirit and he will make you understand. That's where we got the word. All that I have taught you. Now, understanding is not just an intellect. It is partially. That's why we point to our brain. But it's more than that because obviously wis wisdom is not enough it's called the second gift of the holy spirit why because the gift of understanding is getting it you can have wisdom without getting it in such a way that you are so sure by getting it of the truth that you're not afraid to communicate it to others you're not afraid to share the wisdom you can have wisdom but not feel you have to share it in other words, remember last weekend I said, wisdom is like, let's say you ride a bicycle and never fall off. You'll learn how to ride a bicycle. Wisdom comes when you fall off the bicycle. And then you have to get back on. And you know that's good for you. Not to give in to your fear. That's wisdom. You find good in suffering. You use the suffering. Now, understanding allows you to explain that to others. I'll give you an example. See, a lot of times I deal with immigrant parents. This is no insult to immigrant parents. My mother was not able to communicate well the why to me. My mother was very strict. But whenever I would ask her, like, but mom, like, why? why? Her response frequently was, because I said so! That indicates a lack of understanding. Do you see the difference? Immigrant parents frequently have the wisdom to know the truth, but many times they lack the understanding to communicate it to children in a language that they understand. If a teacher, for example, is teaching something without conviction, they do not have understanding. They can regurgitate the truth, 
but it is the gift of understanding that convinces the student that the teaching is true. The Catholic Church frequently has wisdom to know the truth about Jesus, but we frequently lack the understanding of the language necessary. You may have the wisdom to know you have to read your Bible every day, but without understanding, the gift of understanding is just a bunch of words. You can have the wisdom to get redemptive suffering, but it is the gift of understanding that allows you to give testimony to others in their own suffering. The gift of understanding. This is Mother's Day. I hope you remember otherwise. And so our mothers frequently have the gift of understanding. How you know that is because they're much better than fathers at coming down to the children's level. Fathers sometimes, but mothers often are able to communicate to their children by coming down to their level using the words that make the kids understand the why, understand. A number of months ago, the Knights of Columbus approached me and said, Father, we'd like to put a memorial um, beside the statue of Joseph and Jesus outside um, because, you know, they're both male and we like kind of a female presence and it's fairly good for the Knights, obviously they're married and uh, they know happy woman, happy life. So, um, uh, uh, this week, um, uh, last week, we unveiled this memorial. Um, it, it reads, In loving memory of all infants who died in the wombs or arms of their mothers and are now resting in the peace of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Knights of Columbus, St. Joseph the Worker Council, uh, 10531. Um, I think this is important. Uh, last, yeah, uh, um, Last night at the 5 p.m. Mass, um, a couple, I was informed, came into the parish with their three-day-old child. Uh, she gave birth on Thursday, and uh, they came to Mass Saturday night, and uh, so three days old. And um, I informed the congregation of this, and I brought them up, and we showed the congregation the three-day-old child. And I informed them that last year, uh, she lost a child uh, in her womb. Uh, her first child, she lost, um, and uh, the child uh, went uh, home with the Lord, and a girl as well, so two girls. And um, so I informed the congregation of that, and again, that's why these things are important, uh, because again, understanding requires us, the gift of understanding, to go beyond what we can see. And, and, and so, you know, good testimony and, you know, I always like it when mothers know how to teach their children. For example, sometimes I'll go to the schools and, or just generally, and I'll ask kids, you know, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, I'm an only child, and, you know, I, I've always been envious. I go, how many brothers and sisters do you have? And, and it's always nice when you can tell moms have trained their kids properly, and the kids will answer me, oh, I have uh, two here and on earth, and I have two in heaven. I go, oh... I go, that's nice, that's good. And you can tell, woo, you know, some mothers get it. You know, some moms get it. Uh, many don't, because uh, they're afraid or whatever, and they don't mention uh, the miscarriages or uh, whatever else uh, to the children. Um, uh, but the ones who get it, who have the gift of understanding, do. And I can always tell uh, that they do when the children answer me that way, mentioning their sub siblings on earth and their siblings in heaven. Then I can tell the moms get it, you know, and the mothers understand. Um, so again, I wanna thank everybody involved. Um, um, we lost a baby Mason uh, a while ago, and, um, and uh, again, the parents have done a great job at teaching his sister uh, that uh, she has a, a brother in heaven, um, and that's good, um, and that's necessary. I wanna thank the faith community um, uh, who uh, did this, and the creative ones. Um, you know, uh, if you notice, uh, there's, uh, the cross is very feminine looking. It has uh, two infinity signs um, 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 uh, that mat link, uh, that form the cross. And uh, a number of women have said to me uh, that it actually looks like a baby, uh, head, arms, and body. 
so again, you know, uh, very womanly and feminine, and that's good. Um, so I want to thank the Knights uh, for coming up with this idea and paying tribute, um, and this is important. Um, last night, yesterday afternoon, uh, yesterday I was running around like a chick with my head cut off, thank God for espresso, and, um, and uh, we cut the ribbon at Birthright at Vaughn at Highway 7 and Credit Stone. Um, we have the... Um, uh, the, the founder of Birthright of Vaughn here, uh, we have 450 birthright centers uh, in North America. We now have one in Vaughn. Uh, Tony Cairo from the Knights of Columbus uh, gave them a thousand dollar check. Um, she has baby bottles at the back that she'd like you to fill with change and bring it back to the church whenever in the next week or two. Um, that was the ribbon cutting. Um, I've been involved with Birthright myself since my 20s. Uh, I'm on the board of directors for now for 13 years. That's another member of the board of directors. Uh, the blonde young lady is Amanda Bentz, and uh, she um, is now running the Birthright Center with her volunteers. It's all volunteer run. It'll help women with unexpected pregnancies, difficult pregnancies, difficult family situations, um, and it'll help them out. Uh, I got involved with Birthright because in my 20s, uh, the Ontario government decided to pay for abortions. Uh, so abortion is free in Ontario and uh, it's paid by OHIP, it's paid by your taxes. And when I realized that, because I was making good income in my 20s, when I realized that my taxes were going to kill children, um, I decided to get involved in the pro-life movement uh, and Birthright was the place I ended up. So I've been with them since my early 20s. Um, uh, and that was what kind of spurred me you know, the Holy Spirit gave me a kick in the behind and, uh, and, and made me realize my tax dollars, like I'm paying for abortions. Uh, and at that point, I had said, enough of that crap. Um, I'm going into war mode. And, and I'm, you know, I have a little bit of aggressive nature in me, if you have not noticed, obviously. And, and, uh, and, and uh, I got into war mode uh, at that point when I realized I'm paying for abortions. Uh, by living in Ontario, <laughs> forget that. Um, so yeah, so at least you know, I can you know account to my Lord when I die um, that I've done something. Um, it's important that we start young. It's important that we start them young. Like I said, waiting till grade eight was so foolish. All these years waiting till grade eight to introduce our kids to God, the Holy Spirit. Now, don't get me wrong. We teach them the sign of the cross, name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They had no idea who this Holy Spirit was until grade eight. That is ridiculous. And the Pentecostals would go mental when they realized we were waiting till 13 years of age when they introduced their two-year-olds to God, the Holy Spirit. So again, we got to start young, much younger than we're currently starting and as Canada becomes more and more of a secular nation, we have to start younger and younger and younger. Because by the time they're in grade five or six, they're already corrupted. We have Steubenville, 13 spaces available. We're going with 250 young people. Come, send your teenagers. Um, we have the largest number going of any parish in the archdiocese. Dominican trip, um, we're going 130 parishioners. Again, it's the largest mission trip of any parish in the archdiocese. Um, Walmart at Bathurst and Center, again, has invited us on June 3rd to 5th from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. to stand at the entrance uh, and, and ask for funds and explain what we're doing in the Dominican. Now, don't worry, we will train you. You're not going to look dumb. So we will train you what to say when customers come into Walmart and ask you what this is all about. Um, so sign up, one hour, three hours, five hours, give us as much time as you can uh, to witness because we have to cover 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. for three days. Um, and so sign up for a few hours and it's good, especially for the young people, especially, and for the children. Very young children came last year, that's good. It's good that they understand that this is a part of being Catholic. Um, so again, um, sign up at the back in the foyer for the Walmart. Um, uh, and we're looking for diapers, formula, 
running shoes, prenatal vitamins. We got a, 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 um, a, a, con- uh, we got a, a parishioner who works for a company that makes baby formula and they can't give it to us because we're a religious organization, but she did arrange to get it to us for half price. So if rather than buying baby formula, you wanna give some money in an envelope to the office, we'll then give it to her and she'll buy the baby formula for us at half price than what you can get in the stores. Summer camp, nine weeks, get your kids in, we gotta start them early. Pentecost is coming. We want you to wear red as a minimum. I I will let you into the church if you don't wear red. However, you will get one of these from me next weekend. Uh, That's guaranteed. Now, but Father, I don't have anything that's red. Go to the dollar store, buy a red ribbon, put it around your wrist. Like, like, don't be messing with me. Like, I'm not one of these wimpy poo priests that, okay. Uh, no, no, no. That's the opposite of me. So, therefore, red next weekend. A sign of passion, a sign of fire, a sign of flame, a sign of not boring. Because red is the opposite of a boring color. So, the first word I will come out of my mouth when I see you next weekend not wearing red will be the look and the word. (laughs) Boring. Um, uh, So, hmm. and some of you are looking at me and you're the same 5%. (laughs) I'm not wearing red. (laughs) You need the Holy Spirit in you because you're lacking something. Um, You're missing something. If that's your attitude, You need somebody, your parents did not go Matthew 23 on your butt often enough when you were young. That's why you have attitude now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, next weekend, watch what happens. Watch, just watch. Watch. No red, no red. I have no problem. Like, this is the way I learned. My mother did not ask me, baby, you want to be going to mass this weekend? Do you feel like going to mass? My mother never asked me in my whole life, do I feel like going to mass? My mother raised a man. There was no, do you feel like going to mass? That's not how you raise men. So, um, yeah, Um, red, next weekend, and, and, they better know the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, because when I call them up from children's liturgy, seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, (laughs) they don't know, excuse me, baby, can you bring me your mother? That's how I was raised. That's how I have two master's degrees. That's called an MBA. MBAs do not teach with feelings. MBAs teach with results. So again, do your job. You have homework. I know it's probably the first time a priest has ever given you homework. You have homework. You don't do your homework. Matthew 23, read it if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'd be going Matthew 23 on your behind. Why? Because that's what the Holy Spirit expects. God bless you all.